This is Thames from London. Cheers, Pommy. Perv. You ain't no Christian, you know, Eddie Booth. Don't you tell me what I am, Sambo. Don't call me Sambo, hunky. My dad had a big red one. Hunky! It's nice to be back to normal. <laughs> News and this is Sonny reading it. There's an awful lot of migrants coming. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. That's the right one. Yeah. Welcome to episode six of the investigation of Jack Smithhurst in Love Thy Neighbour in Australia 2023. Thanks for staying on and watching all this and all the um, episodes or whatever that, that I've split them up into how many different episodes um, and um, they're in running order um, and most of it was not cut it was all um, as I was recording so um, there may have been little pieces that were cut, but you didn't need to look at that. But uh, thanks for staying on. There's going to be more episodes coming of this particular show because um, of what I had been doing during the course of the few weeks. Um, uh, firstly, uh, let me tell you that um, I had been getting in touch um, with some... Um, stars of the show of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia um, and the first one being um, uh, Robert Hughes was the first one I've been trying to get in touch with sorry if I'm speaking um, in <laughs> sometimes the the sentences are not stuck together because I'm still trying to think of the things but when I'm outside and um, recording live um, it you know uh, the recording will be more um, you know I'll be talking more uh, fluently and f you know flowing but r right now because I'm at home um, it's a little bit harder you see so uh, do uh, apologize for that I do apologize so um, I mean I can string two words together better than some people yeah, I won't go there. Uh, anyway, so uh, this particular episode, I'll still be going outside. So I'm still carrying on the investigation. You're not one of them, are you? <laughs> I'm divorced. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. 18 years I was married. 18 years of nagging, arguing and abuse. Oh dear, she sounds terrible. 
No, that was me. <laughs> yeah, so if there's a break in the conversation, a stop or pause, that means uh, something's disturbed me or something's happened and I've just got to carry on. It's, it's hard at home. It's really, really hard to re carry on recording at home and doing stuff. But when I'm outside, um, yeah, the good stuff starts to happen. So the person I tried to get a hold of was Robert Hughes. Um, he's, you could say, um, he was also had a starring role in the show, um, Love Thy Neighbour in Australia, as well as Jack Smithhurst. So he's like um, someone that looks after him in the home um, because he's just, um, uh, uh, Eddie Booth has just emigrated to Australia and um, he's living in his home. Basically, they're living together in a home with, with, um, with his wife on that one. So that's Robert Hughes with his um, wife that plays um, the, the character on the show. Um, so um, the recording, I, I actually recorded the conversation. I'm, I'm about to make another call. Um, Today is Easter Monday, so but I will make the call and you will hear that call as well. So I've made two phone calls. Uh, the first one didn't go as well as I thought it would have gone. My second attempt was sending an email to see if I can actually um, just a basically a small chat with Robert Hughes um, to to see if I can bring back some memories of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia and um, to see, you know, what it was like working with Jack Smithhurst and uh, what was it like recording at that time and um, basically what were the really good memories of the show. So that was something I was going to ask him, you see. And um, uh, because, you know, these characters is just hilarious. So um, I just thought if I get um, uh, to contact, you know, uh, some members of the of the um, of the series, it'll be good. You know, um, some of the actors, it'll be it'll be fun. So so I've tried what I did. Um, see, Robert Hughes, his wife has got a. Um, an actor's agency in Sydney. So um, I contacted the agency that way to try and get hold of him. Um, he's actually, Robert Hughes is actually living in the UK now, so he's he's not with us in Sydney. Um, so, I mean, if there's any, any way I can get in touch with uh, Robert Hughes, I can. Uh, so uh, we, we, can, we can talk about the show. Um, that's that's pretty much uh, that side of it really um, um, some of the recordings coming up as you can hear and um, you know as I said it didn't go as well as I wanted them to but what can I do but yeah if you have a listen anyway and um, yeah this is uh, the the conversation you'll be hearing um, but yeah, it didn't go as well as I thought it would. Coming up on the shows though, on the future shows, there's a, a couple of more episodes that I'll be um, putting out and there will be also in the news, uh, breaking news, Marley Engineering is going on strike. I'll have an episode on the searching for the RSL club alone so that will be about a 30 minute episode searching for the club alone in Auburn. And I doubt if there was any recordings in uh, Blacktown because I, ha I had the feeling that it may have been recorded at Blacktown um, in maybe the workers club or something. But uh, that I don't believe that happened. But um, as I said before, on one of the episodes, there was not a South Auburn Workers Club or an RSL club, um, f as my memory goes, 
and as I have done my research. So there's the Auburn RSL Club, which is a which was one of the big main clubs. And um, I believe that there's that since closed down, I, I believe it's closed down because the, the images I'm seeing on the internet now looks like the, the place is closed. So I do recall only one time uh, as a few times I've been to Auburn uh, a long time ago now. Uh, these are like the years probably 2006, 2004 to get some DVDs. And that, and that was, um, uh, yeah, to, to come to some shops to get some DVDs. And um, one afternoon I did visit, uh, I think the old original Auburn RSL club and um, on Northumberland Road from memory. That's a long time ago now. Uh, but since I th I'm seeing on the internet, it has closed. So what I'll do is I'll go down that road and I'll show you on the episode of what happened. And what I might also do is um, show you now on this episode that I'm making a couple of calls to the Auburn Council to see if I can get access to that to that area which it may have been recorded in um, I'm not sure if the building is still fit for someone to actually walk in there uh, I mean, I'm not sure if they can actually have someone to access it or it's been closed to the public completely because I think it's fenced off like they've got the fence around the building I believe that this is what's happened but I will go there on the um, one future episode and show you this um, and so what I really wanted to do was show you the what the club looks like inside now I do recall um, some of that green paint some of that green paint in the building and some steps so and, and it could have been where they recorded it and I and at the time when I was there you know um, I, I still as I said before I did have a feeling that um, or knew of a recording of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia around Auburn but it didn't really um, I, I was I was too busy in my in my personal life just to do anything so just to do any research or anything I was just too busy so um, uh, now that I've got the um, time to do this I'm actually going to go out there and show you um, um, what what I'm looking for what I'm trying to investigate here and show you that this is where they recorded um, some of the episodes of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia in um, in the club in the pub area so I'm pretty sure that's where it was recorded and I'm uh, I've been hearing it was at the Auburn RSL club I've been hearing it from somewhere and I'm not sure where or where I've read it possibly read it somewhere and that would have been years ago now and yeah so like I said I've been too busy in my personal life just to do just to actually investigate these things and to actually show anyone you know I don't know if anybody wants to wanted to know at that time but um, to actually look at look for these things now uh, I think it's a good thing and I think it's a good thing for um, a tribute to Jack Smithhurst um, because this, this is all about um, his last few shows here in Aus Australia um, I know he did visit um, later at some stage the Sydney Opera House for uh, some stage performance as well like a com I think it was a comedy performance there but um, this is this is what I'm working on now love thy neighbor only um, so uh, in this first section um, of the of the um, ep of this episode it's um, actually trying to trying to get in touch with Robert Hughes uh, from the Love Thy Neighbour series to see if he's got any good memories of the show. 
Um, so you'll hear next up two phone calls um, of me trying to get in touch with an agency uh, to try and find out if I can get in touch with him. Um, yeah, let's see if that happens. And then um, the next recording is the recording of myself contacting the council and uh, you'll see me uh, going through that process as well. Let's see if that, if anything comes of that, which probably will be a little bit hard, but let's see. Okay, so um, as I said before, I'm going to get out there. <laughs> I'm going to get out there and do the same thing again. So I'll get out to the clubs or the, the area in which the club was probably have a look at the f a few pubs down there maybe have a beer we'll have a beer together a uh, one hour ep uh, half an hour an episode have a beer and we'll talk about what's going on um yeah so there'll be phone calls uh we'll go and visit the clubs i'll take a visit out to blacktown to show you marley engineering which is not even there <laughs> it's not there uh so it's the street in which he mentioned wattle street at the beginning of the episode, the when um, Jack Smith has comes arrives at the airport, and he speaks to the um, to the man behind the desk, and um, he mentions that you know on the, on the card someone's left a card for him, and um, it's he's to be at Miley Engineering in Wattle Street in Blacktown. Uh, and funnily enough, funnily enough, <laughs> I lived out that way and um, I lived just behind Wattle Street in Blacktown. So uh, funny that this is all happening. Um, and the other thing I really wanted to show you, uh, which is, this is probably the one of the difficult parts, besides the club, uh, is being at the airport, uh, showing you exactly where it was recorded because you can see on there those escalators I know exactly where that is the escalators and um, I'm going to try and find out where the recording was of where he was sitting at the bar so if it was there at the airport it would have been there at one of those places those travel places uh, where like you have a uh, you've come from another country and you sit down in like a um, a lodge or like a it's like a little room where uh, you can have drinks and you you have a bathroom there. I've never known of these places. I'm not a traveller myself, even, even though I've travelled one way and I've never been. I've never really been anywhere else, and I've never really known of these places where uh, these little lodges or these little places where you can stay, have drinks and rest. In the airport, I never knew. Some of these places have got security behind them, and some of these places don't, and it depends on the airline that you go with. So I've noticed on the internet as well, I've done some searches this week. This is uh, what I've done this week as well. I've done some searches to find out uh, where these places are. So there's a few little lodges or places that you can stay and have like a beer or drinks or something. And um, you can sit there and, you know, um, and uh, rest there and stuff like that. So I'm gonna going to try and locate, that's going to be a hard one, to locate that area. Um, although I found some mini images. I'll show you these images. These images are like, as it were, as, as the airport was in 1980. And you can see those, uh, what looks like... Um, these uh, uh, red uh, red cotton line chairs or something that they used to have at the airport and the walls were quite quite plain so there wasn't much on the walls and you had these signs here and there and you, of course you can see the escalators but to actually find that little um, place where he had a drink uh, we had a couple of drinks with uh, the other fella that was on the series as well, um, the big tough guy, Aussie guy, um, 
that's going to be a little bit of a hard one. So I'm going to attempt to go out there uh, to the airport as well. On It's probably going to be half a day there at the airport just to try and search and find uh, the actual place um, in which um, Jack Smith has had a drink on the first episode. So let's let's hold there, hold that thought, and I'll be right with you. Uh, uh, the crack of willow on leather, the crunch of studs on turf, the thud of boot in face. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're a sportsman. Oh, yes, yes, yes. First, you've got uh, football focus at 12.30, followed by grandstand, then all in wrestling. <laughs> then we've got sports report, and eventually we've got match of the day in the evening. And I'm chair sportsman. You won't get fit that way. I'll tell you what, love. If you follow a team as good as Manchester United, you've got to be fit to watch them. <laughs> Hello, anybody home? Hello, here he is, the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> I heard that, you pommy perv. Thanks, Digger. Come on, you two. It's too early in the day for all that. I'm only pulling his leg, dear. Bales. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? So, uh, let, I'll just, I'm just organising it a little bit more now. A little bit better for the to end the series. So, um, the next episode will be on the phone calls alone. Part of it's a bit of a joke, but it's it's actually real. These are real phone calls I'm making. Uh, one of them, I think, I, I'll, I'll make you watch that one so you can watch it while I'm doing it. Phone call. Um, so that's another one. These are these is going to be happening. Um, so that's basically the phone calls. Um, I'll have the episode. Um, the following episode I will be going out to find the RSL club and I will be reporting outside and showing you the, those locations thank you for joining us on ITN Sleeping beauty. building's been there but it's been there for a long long time long long time and I found out that it's been just been demolished I'm sure I drove when I was in Auburn last time I drove through that area and I'm pretty sure I saw it um the the fence was there but I didn't yeah I didn't um get to look at what was going on just yet but I think from what I can see it's just been demolished I'll get there what can I do? I can't, I can't access the building. It's gone. So we'll get there and have a look at the, the street. I'll take you through, through the area. And uh, this is going to cheese everybody off. To, to find, you know, to let people know that these building complexes is just going up everywhere. You know, you got these little houses and then these building complexes. Yeah. Anyway, you try and stay happy about it, but you got it when you got all these building complexes going up everywhere. It means more and more people, more and more people, more bloody immigrants or illegal. I'm sure illegal. Foop de do. Hey, Snow White. <laughs> then Paul McCartney went to Scotland. 
<laughs> Get that down here. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there you are, fellas. Who orders those? Judy. Oh. oh, excuse me. Where are you going? The Danny. <laughs> What's he talking about? He's got to shake hands with the unemployed. <laughs> Why can't you say so? Why can't you speak proper English, like what we do? Because we're Australian. Bloody colonials. Now, don't start that again. It's a great country to be born in. Yes. Well, I hope I don't bloody die here. <laughs> that can be arranged. Look, we've all got to go one day. Very true. Hello, he's back again. How do you feel, son? I've just thrown a seven. <laughs> Pardon? He, he means he's been sick. Have another drink, make you feel better. Oh. <laughs> we was just talking about diet. What colour? <laughs> Not that sort of dying. Snuffing it. Oh, I think I'm going to snuff it. Oh, shut up and get your drink down. It'll be all right. I wonder where you go when you die. Nobody knows. Because none of us have ever been. And nobody has ever come back. Nobody's ever come back. Well, that's where you're both wrong, because my friend Tommy came back. Ah, <laughs> oh, pull the other one! It's true. What happened? Well, I'll tell you if you listen. See, I was walking past his house one evening when I noticed there was eight bottles on his doorstep. Bottles of milk? No, Guinness. He always had two for his breakfast. Anyway, I climbed in through the back window and there was Tommy lying on the floor as stiff as a poker. Must have been a shock. He was, he was. Anyway, I sent for old Dr. Parker. When he came, he took one look at Tommy and he sent for the undertaker. <laughs> oh, they did him up beautifully. Do you know, I've never seen Tommy look so well lying there in his coffin in the best room. You mean the front parlour? No, the back room at the line and lap. <laughs> you had the coffin in a pub. Well, why not? He spent more time there than he did at home. <laughs> anyway, there that the miracle happened. Charlie Cunliffe shouted out, It's my turn, what you're all having? And Tommy sat up in his coffin and said, I'll have a pint. <laughs> oh, that's a bit far-fetched. It's true, I was there, I saw it happen. Yeah, well, he, he couldn't have been dead in the first place. Old Dr Parker said he was. Mind you, I will admit, he could have been drunk. You mean Tommy? No, old Dr. Parker. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, listen, I didn't come down in the last shower, and neither did he. You can scoff, but Tommy would bear me out if he were here. God rest his soul. <laughs> but what do you mean, God rest his soul? You said he come back to life. He did. But when we found out he was still alive, we were all so chuffed we got roaring drunk. And Tommy was knocked down on his way home by the herd. <laughs> he didn't come back again? No, no. This time he'd definitely gone. Speaking of God, I think it's time we all went. It's early yet. No, look, it, it, it's nearly half past eleven. I'll see you blokes tomorrow. Mm. Not if I see you first. <laughs> oh. What's the matter with you, son? You're not about to throw another seven, are you? We should have been back hours ago. What's Joyce going to say? Well, if it's anything like my Jones, you'll say, look at the state you're in, what time do you call this, and I'm going home to Mother. This will be our first quarrel. Ah, uh, never mind, Bernard. Think of the fun you'll have making it up. We better go. Sit down. There's no point in going home now. There's no point in shutting the stable door after you've spilt the milk. <laughs> <laughs> if you go home now, Joyce will go raving mad. But if you wait a while, we can sneak back and creep in. That way you won't get in half as much aggro tomorrow morning. Are you sure? Definitely. Same again, Cyril. Uh, uh, uh.
again, Cyril.